São Miguel, the biggest and most populous of the Portuguese Azores Islands. São Miguel is located on the eastern end of the Azores Islands, or 1500 kilometers west of Portugal. Around 140,000 people live on the island, which is also known as Ilha Verde, the Green Island. São Miguel is the most famous for its various volcanic sceneries, waterfalls, and its pretty historical towns. The island is truly a fairy tale island, and it's hard to find anything like it anywhere else, outside of the Azores Islands group. Before we start, feel free to subscribe to Globus Travelers for more videos. Number 10. Nordest. Nordest is Portuguese for northeast, which is unsurprisingly its location on the island of São Miguel. The town shares names with the municipality, which is the least populous on the island. The interior is mostly mountains, river valleys and forest landscapes. Nordest is most famous for its seven arched bridge, finished in 1883. While strolling through the bridge, the cozy and sleepy town center reveals itself in a classical Portuguese and Azorian fashion. Not far from Nordest town, but still in the municipality, you will find a number 9 on the list. Number 9. Miradouro Sosego Miradouro da Ponta do Sosego is a beautiful viewpoint with a near-perfect view both towards the ocean and green mountain sides. It is located just south of Nordest town, but it is still in the same municipality and is the easternmost attraction of São Miguel. The viewpoint invites you into a beautiful and well-kept park or garden, take your pick. It doesn't take long to see it all, but it's possible to have a picnic or even do a barbecue, and the view of course, it doesn't get any better. We just brought some sandwiches from the test for our lunch. Number 8. Furnas Lake Lagoa da Furnas or Furnas Lake is located next to, wait for it, Furnas. I suggest to hike around the lake. The loop is around 6 kilometers, and it's pretty flat. It's one of the easier hikes on the island, but also one of the prettier ones. You should add a few kilometers if you walk from Furnas town, but it is possible to park several places around the lake. Two places on the hike are very interesting. Number one is Mata Hatim Jose do Canto. We didn't actually go into the garden, as I didn't even know it was there. But at this place you'll also find a very unique church that almost seems dropped from the heavens or even slightly misplaced. Number two is Fumarolas Lagoa das Furnas, which is a geothermal area. You can safely walk over and observe boiling water and sulfuric smoke coming out of the earth. Also, several restaurants will use this for stewing the famous traditional dish, cocido. Number 7. Amida de Nossa Senhora da Paz First off, sorry for the pronunciation. The church or the chapel is located just north of Villa Franca do Campo. It towers over the ocean and the sleepy town on its small mountain top, with majestic views and a marvelous design. To get there, it's just a short drive on some narrow winding roads, but it's not too bad and there's several barbecue and picnic spots on the way up to the top. The chapel was built in 1764. According to a legend, a shepherd searched for shelter due to bad weather and found an image of the Virgin Mary at this location. Number 6. Ponta Delgada. Ponta Delgada is the historical center of São Miguel. It is also home to half the island's population and where most tourists will stay. The history of the city and island is too massive for me to comment on. But things you should see and do is walk around the city center and enjoying the aesthetics of Ponta Delgada, the small streets and historical buildings. Visit Fort de Sao Brás and the Botanical Gardens. Neither did I get inside the fort or the gardens due to time restraints, but this would be a priority if I came back. Also, if you want to eat international food, this is likely one of the few places on the island where you'll find it. But of course, do try the local cuisine first. Number 5. Sede Cidades. 
Cetus Cidades probably don't need a major introduction. With social media, these legs has become synonymous with the Azores, and of course, especially São Miguel, and with good reason. As a proof of visiting São Miguel, you should go to Mir Duro da Boca do Inferno, probably the most famous viewing point on the island. Beware, it can get pretty crowded. On the way there, you'll go through a forest or a park, which is very well kept and surprisingly nice to go through. Heading down towards the town, there is plenty of scenic spots where you can take in the great views. Especially the area around Miradoro to Cerrado das Feras. The town of Cide Cidades was not that impressive, but it's a nice start and ending point to where you would have a great hike. I went around the smaller Lagoa Verde, which I regret, because certain areas of the hike was uncomfortable and didn't even seem that safe go with a more well-known hiking route instead. Number 4. Whale and Dolphin Safari This was one of the better experiences of the trip. The reason it doesn't go higher is due to how long it took to actually find the animals. We did find them, but there is no guarantees. Also, someone deleted almost all footage. Well, it was me. And that was about 30 minutes of raw footage which is now gone. Luckily when I ran out of battery I started using my phone so I do have just a little. What we saw on the trip was sperm whales and dolphins. The dolphin was of a smaller species but I don't recall which one it was. Number 3. Furnas. Furnas is definitely also one of the most famous places on Sao Miguel. The town itself is nice and quaint, it's worth a tour and having your lunch. However, the main attraction has to be Park Terra Nostra, famous for its exotic colors and plant life, and especially the thermal baths. The thermal baths, which come off as a luxurious mud bath, is around 30 degrees and is well worth climbing into. Furnas is truly the island's treasure chest, containing the perfect climate for an almost infinite number of species within the world of flora and fauna. Number 2. Ribera Grande. Ribera Grande is the second largest city of São Miguel and is located on the northern coast of the island. It is home to around 10,000 inhabitants. The best sources indicate that the early settlements that would become Ribera Grande yeah. began in the late 15th or early 16th century. The reason Ribera Grande ranks this highly is because of its center. The center of the town starts from the bridge called Ponte dos Oito Arcos. It stands above a ravine which is made into a canal and park area. Above this area you will find the old town, churches and plenty of history. Number 1. Park Natural da Ribera dos Calderos. I do love myself a good surprise. This park is not very big, but it's full of these small surprises. And, best of all, it's free. If you head away from the main park, you'll quickly get to Cascada de Ribera dos Calderos. Head further in, and you'll find more waterfalls, streams, and nature. At the end, if you're lucky, you'll find groups of people do some sort of cliff jumping. The main park has small waterfalls and is also a botanical garden. There is also different sorts of levadas and buildings, which historically had a function for society, also showing a bit of the human side of history. Sao Miguel is without a doubt one of the most beautiful islands in the world. However, one week is not enough to see it all. So. If you know anything interesting about São Miguel, or feel like other places deserve the spot in your top 10, please share it with the rest of us. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe and see you in the next one. Take care and thank you for watching.